Hello everyone, welcome back to the Korean Keto Guy channel and okay, yep, I'm already sad, I'm sounding like a broken record, I get it. Um, I haven't posted in God, I can't even, it's already been way too long. So anyways, um, as a sort of way to make it up to you all, um, I'm of course gonna come up with one more new series. Yay, yeah. <laughs> um, which, that's probably not even what you all want, but hold on, I, I feel like this is, this is gonna be a good one, ladies and gentlemen, so hear me out so you know kind of just reading the comments and you know thank you all by the way to the new subscribers and of course to the, all the comments which I'm reading I'm thinking of just doing more of like you know this new series would be a keto food review right so what I'm really gonna do is kind of focus in on Korean keto foods that you can buy at your Korean market or maybe Asian market and you know based off how those foods go I can say that they're good right or they're bad I should say bad, good, right? So that you guys, you know, don't have to waste your guys' money. Um, but for example, for today, I went ahead and I bought good old chadolbegi. Check, Check that out. Look, let me get in there. Yes, so you can see the tag there. So this is from my local Korean market, uh, the Hanyang market here in Austin, Texas. But Essentially, you can get chadurbegi, or in English, this is the beef brisket that you can get like a Korean market at, at a Korean restaurant. You can get this in almost any Korean market, is my guess. But I'll be showing you guys how you can cook this. Basically, you just need a pan fry, or I'm sorry, you need a, a pan so you can fry it on. Uh, and then that's pretty much it, right? And then we're going to see how this goes. Now, of course, you can't have chadurbegi without. Uh, oh, whoops. <laughs> without, without some freshly peeled, uh, freshly peeled garlic. Um, and uh, krill leaves. And samjang. Yeah, 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 so hold on. Let's, let's, let's try that again here, right? So, I also got myself some freshly peeled, wow, I'm missing peeled. Freshly peeled garlic from the Korean market. Okay, so this is already peeled, like, you know, whole leaves, raw garlic, like what you would get at the Korean barbecue places. Same deal with the perilla leaves. These are fresh, look at those, fresh green perilla leaves. Okay, and then of course you guys all know this one, samjang, right? This is the fermented bean paste, soy bean paste. It's the mixture of the two, the slightly spicier one. Now, one hint of caution, right? This is being the Korean Keto Guide channel. You gotta be careful with this in terms of your serving sizes, right? Like this is still in my book, keto friendly, okay? We're talking two grams of carbs per tablespoon. So unless you're eating like multiple tablespoons of this, yeah, sure you can go overboard, but, but at two grams of carbs, you guys, come on, you can have two tablespoons of this and you're fine. And most of the times you're, do, you're doing little bits, which I'll show you when I try it. But anyways, I have the pearl leaves, samjang, freshly peeled garlic, but of course the main, main attraction for today, for today's Korean food review, right? Or I should say the Korean Keto Guy food review, uh, is this chado day. So, also kind of similar to the how-to series, I'm, gonna, I'm showing everything from scratch to finish, right? No, uh, from scratch from start to finish <laughs> no edit so it's not like i'm doing some fancy cooking techniques not at all literally look i got my pan i'm gonna set it to medium high heat so on mine it's a it's an electric oven it's not a gas range it's just electric i set it to number seven right which you know i think it's six eight ten the highest setting is ten so i put it at a seven all right you can get yourself one of these non-stick tea fowl pans that I always use. Let that heat up. You need some tongs, okay? Either you can get some tongs or chopsticks. So you can flip it. And then the idea is once you kind of flip it and cook it, you know, it's ready to go. You can essentially eat. So while I'm letting the pan heat up, I'm also going to get a plate. So grab, I'm going to grab a plate from here. Like so. Right? I love this kitchen, guys. I can just grab everything here. You're just gonna grab a plate like so. So when you're done cooking the chadar veggie, you can just put it right on the plate. 
nice and easy, right? Um, oh, another another uh, pro tip here. Do you want to call it that? Actually, it's not even a pro tip. What am I saying? What you should do is you should always wash your Prillo leaves, right? So I'm gonna take out the Prillo leaves. They come in Ziploc bags. This this place is awesome. Like someone must be growing it in their backyard and just putting it there, but in the market or selling it at the free market, which I'm okay with. You get your Prillo leaves, okay? Take off this little wire hole, put them like so. Look, I even have my seat here, which one? Now you can see. There's like an automatic soap dispenser over here that is in the way, sort of. All I'm doing is I'm just giving my curly leaves a little rinse here. You see? Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy at all. Okay, so making sure that the leaves get more or less unsoaked. Get a paper towel. Put the leaves on the paper towel like so. Or if you have a strainer, same thing, you just put it on the strainer. And voila. You got yourself some prill leaves. I don't know about you all, like, I'm a huge, huge fan of prill leaves, so it's like, Whenever I do like Korean barbecue, I'm a, you'll see me, I'll, I'll probably do more Prillo leaves than lettuce, so. All right, so the pan is already heated up nicely for us. I'm gonna get the chowder veggie off the top. Now this is frozen, by the way, it comes frozen. I let it sit out here for approximately 30 minutes. You don't have to do that. I just, you know, thought to myself it'd be a little easier to cook, but you can throw it straight from the freezer straight onto the pan. This meat is so thin, guys, it'll cook, okay? Just to show you. Look how thin that is, okay? It's like paper, paper thin, all right? So it'll cook super fast. So it's, without further ado. I'll make sure we move over here so that you guys can see me. I'm just literally throwing pieces of the brisket right here. Now, if it does roll, okay, so here's the thing, whenever it's frozen, you guys might be asking, it's all rolled up, how do I cook that? Honestly, it's so thin, you can even put them in rolled up and just flip it over after a minute. So, this thing is cooking so fast, especially the ones that are already flat, you can just start flipping it. Change the the heat settings to number eight. Okay, so now it's on almost high. Okay. Yeah, I think high heat will be better. So I put it. So this goes up to ten. Now it's like at about eight and a half to nine.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's almost done. So one other cool thing about this is that it cooks so fast that not even a, maybe a minute or two on one side and then another minute or two on the other, and then you're done. And then from there, you can kind of take it on two ways or two approaches. For me personally, uh, grab my chopsticks. What I like to do is I like to eat the chowder veggie as I'm cooking it so that, you know, it's like a Korean barbecue feel. Otherwise, what you can do is you can just cook the whole serving, the whole package, and then eat it later. Totally up to you. Uh, this first batch or first round is kind of done, but let me show you guys what that looks like uh, before, before I taste test it, right? Review it here. Pro tip, before you jump, you're done, I like to just give it a little quick stir fry, okay? And voila, here is the first batch done. Ladies and gentlemen, you see that? Beautiful, beautiful. You know what, I'm gonna cook one more round. Uh, you know, I'll just cook the whole thing and I'll use my YouTube magic so I can come back and show you what it, what it looks like when it's all done. So I will see you guys in just a second. And I'm back, good old YouTube magic. So, that entire package has yielded us this amount of cooked chowder veggie. And look, it's so springy. It's so funny, because one of the key characteristics of chowder veggie or cream beef brisket is it's, it's very it's got this very springy action to it well every at any rate uh this is what the finished product looks like after cooking it all in your pan of course i've got my parse did i say parsley i meant to say my acrylo leaves i've got my fresh garlic and then i've got my sangja Making sure everything is off. Do this, got my napkins. Let's get a few pieces of garlic out of here. And here, of course, comes the best part. My most favorite part is once you actually cook the chowder veggie. We're gonna review it and give it a shot here. So this is how we do it. I like to get about three pieces of pillow leaves. So I love pillow leaves. Let's go two pieces of Korean brisket, or I should just say tatabeki or a brisket. Samjang, look. Look how much I'm putting there. That much. All right, that's not even close to a tablespoon. So for those of you who are wondering, oh, it, yeah, it's not keto friendly if you put like three tablespoons, but if you're doing little bits like that at a time, totally okay. And last but not least, oops, the piece, I don't know why I'm saying like, let's say a piece of the resistance, like French stuff, but it's the best part, icing on the cake here. Look at that, that big old piece of raw garlic. So. Let's give it a shot, ladies and gentlemen. garlic is spicy. Hold on. That is phenomenal. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> this is good. Oh man. This is really good. Like if you have that itch, 
for that cream brisket style or the cream barbecue. This this will satisfy it. Now, is it as good as a cream barbecue? Probably not only because you can really mess this up when you're cooking it. For instance, right, a lot of I think a big mistake that a lot of people make is they cook it too long. Like you, you really don't. You're, you're basically eating it rare. You don't want to cook it very long. Um, which actually, even I might have cooked it a little, just a little bit too long. But anyways, oh man, just like this, a piece of garlic and tom jam. one ingredient here. And that is of course kimchi, oh yeah. I've got the good stuff. This is homemade kimchi from my mom, which can't be beat. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying like home, just in general, like home cooked meals. Anyways. Let's give that a shot with some kimchi. Look at that bad boy. Oh, that's okay, guys. Um, we'll shoot. This is definitely not gonna turn into a mukbang video, but one more bite. Yeah. All right. This is a winner. All right. I recommend you guys try this absolutely. So if you have chowder baggy or beef brisket at your Korean market or Asian market, don't be scared, don't be intimidated. All you need is a, a frying pan, okay? Set it to, I'm just gonna say high heat now because that's probably what you should, I should have done in the game. Set it to high heat, maybe a minute on each side at most, okay? And then kind of stir fry at the end and then you get pretty decent beef brisket. I love, I'm loving it. So. As far as this Korean Keto Guy food review, this gets two thumbs up. Fantastic, highly recommended. But yeah guys, as always, please stay safe out there. I know it's still a little crazy, so stay extra safe out there. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you guys like this new series, right, where I'm just going and reviewing uh, keto friendly foods, right? Um, and then yeah, I'm always open to ideas. Let me know if you guys you know, want me to review a specific type of Korean food, Asian food that's keto friendly and you know, to see, to see what I have to say about it. But yeah, as always, see you all next weekend and have a great rest of the day, everybody. Take care.